Hello there. I hope you are doing good. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to solve another interesting and complex JavaScript interview question. In the previous video, I had solved or implemented compose async function. As you can see, it was asked in Adobe's MTS2 interview. The question read as uh, compose asynchronous functions with chaining support. So asynchronous functions are functions um, that returns promises or do async operations where we have to halt the operation until unless the asynchronous operation is finished and then we move the operation further to the next unit of task. This is a variation of compose async function that we are going to implement. Rather than being async, this will be synchronous in nature, but the execution to the next function will move at will and that will depend when we invoke the next function which each of this function will uh, receive as a fallback function. So as you can see we have this function a, a accepts two arguments a and b and then a next callback function. We then have an internal function or a helper function on timeout. This will call the next with null value. So the null will be the error value because there are no errors. So we are passing null to the next and then the next computed value or processed value which is x into y and this will be called after a timeout of 100 milliseconds. When the next is called the execution moves from a to b. Then similarly b does some computations calls the next function and this helper on timeout function is called after 100 millisecond. It will compute the received value or the received argument and process it further and pass it to the next. And after that we have c function and that too receives a value and a callback function next and then it will do some processing and pass it forward. Here we have this compose async function that function uh, that receives these functions in an order as you can see uh, it is in re reverse order C, B and A. As I had explained in the previous video in compose the execution goes from right to left whereas in pipe the execution goes from left to right. So that's why here we receive the functions in a reverse order and then the execution will start from A, it will go to B and then to C. So we have to create this compose function. This will take the number of functions as argument and then it will return another function as you can see here in the example. We have this done, done is the final callback function and we pass phi and 3 as an argument and then done as a callback. Phi and 3 because the first function in the compose which is a accepts two argument x and y. So we have to implement this compose async function. This will return a function and then that function the return function will accept the inputs. It will pass this input through the functions that the compose async function has received all of these. So the initial input will be passed to A. A will process that and pass it to B. B will process that and pass it to C. Finally, once C has done all the processing, then we will invoke the done function. The done receives first argument as error, second as result. If there is error, we will throw error, otherwise we will print the result. Now here, if you see the function's definition, each function accepts a next callback and the execution to the next function goes only when when we call this next function. So keeping this in mind we have to create this compose async function. The basic of solving any javascript interview question is breaking down the example clearly. So here we can see that compose async function will receive any number of functions as input. The execution starts from right to left and then it will return another function. That function can receive any number of arguments as input and then finally one callback function. So the callback function will be at the end and before that will be the number of arguments that we have passed to the input functions. 
so let's start implementing the compose async function here itself so as the structure says i'll create the compose async function and this function will receive any number of functions as input i am using the rest operator to aggregate them in a form of array after that we will return another function from this this function will accept any number of arguments as input and then inside that we have to do the processing so if we see the structure the return function receives any number of argument as input but the last argument is always the callback function so what we can do is we can get the last argument out and this will always be the callback function after this if we notice the execution always starts from right to left so it's up to us how do we define the logic for the processing but what we can do is after that what we can do is we can get the number of we can get the number of items in the array sorry we can get the number of functions that are there which we have to process so function start length minus 1 so these are the number of functions we have to process we'll start from the last function because the compose accepts the value or it, it does the processing in the reverse order which is from right to left so that's why i'm getting the index index value is the last function and then what we'll do is we'll execute this function at the index or the last index this will execute the first function from the functions and to this we'll pass the arguments and the callback function now here what will happen is this will execute the last function which is a and to that it will pass the arguments so arguments we have collected all the arguments in the form of array using rest operator we are spreading it over here and then finally the callback so here what will happen is it will just process the last function if i run this you will see that 5 into 3 will be passed over here and then the next function and next function will return this 5 into 3 as 15 so if i run this 15 should be printed because the execution happens at the last function but we have to compose it which is we have to process the function and then pass it to the next function with the processed value so what we'll do is we'll create a helper function inside this next that we accept the error and the result as in the definition here and then what we'll do is inside this next function we'll check if there is error then we will call the callback or invoke the callback terminate this this will be act as a base condition to terminate the next we'll call this with the error value because the callback done accepts the first value as error and second value as result so we'll just pass the error value to it otherwise we'll check if index is zero which means we have processed the last input then what we'll do is we'll return or we'll invoke the callback with null because there is no error and then with the result that this next function has and if any of this is not happening then what we'll do is we'll decrement the index and then we'll recursively call the function with the lesser index value which is the next function in the queue because we are decrementing the index value so that means that we are calling the next function in the queue and to this we'll pass 
the result which is the value from the last processing and recursively pass this next function to this so this will call itself until and unless these two base conditions are met which is if either is error then terminate and invoke the callback immediately otherwise if you have done processing all the values then terminate and call the or invoke the callback with the result value and finally here rather than calling the callback directly what we'll do is we'll call the next function so how it will work is it will start the execution here after the first execution the next function will be called this will check the conditions if these two conditions or the base condition for termination is not met it will reduce the index and it will do the execution of the next function in the queue with the processed result value now here the result can be a single or multiple values depending upon what we are receiving but in the function definition if we see all the next function is receiving only one argument after the error so that's why i am accepting this as a result and passing it forward as it is trusting on the example that we have received let's say if the function are receiving more than one value then you add a check for the result to see if it is a array type then spread it otherwise if it is not an array then pass the usual value so now if we run this we should get two as the output because it will pass the value through all the functions and then we'll receive the final output so it first pass the value through a a pass or invoke the next function with this product of these two arguments which is 3 and 5 so it becomes 15 15 is passed to b then b adds 5 to that result and then moves the pointer to the next function this becomes 15 plus 5 20 the next pointer goes to c in the c we see that 20 is divided by 10 and then when we receive 2 as the final output because there is nothing after c so the base condition is met and our done callback function is invoked now let's increase the time if i change this to thousand so you'll see that we get the result after three seconds because after each operation is completed then only the pointer is passed to the next value so that's why we are getting two after a delay of three seconds this is a synchronous function but because this is controlled the pointer goes to the next function only when the this uh, callback is invoked so that's why it happens in a sequence one after the another so these are some of the complex uh, interview question java interview question that you can expect in ht2 level nowadays practice is the key to solve any type of question this question is a good example of how do you understand the closure and the execution order in javascript i have two more questions related to this similar uh, which is piping and piping 2 that you can check out i'll add the link to those in the description if you are preparing for your javascript interviews then you can check out my course uh, here i have everything that you need to prepare for your front-end interviews front-end interview problems data structures algorithms design pattern then machine coding questions system design questions and company-wise question sets that you can use to practice within the inbuilt lab i hope you have enjoyed um, solving this question um, i'll be back with more interview questions uh, that are being asked currently in the interviews thank you for your time have a good day